How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about The Closet, issue number three. This is actually, I believe, the final issue of this uh, series. So yeah, kind of a mini-series there. And I guess right off the bat I should say, uh, don't worry about the cover. I thought they just put a major spoiler on the cover, but no, that's, that's not how this story ends. Uh, anyway, this is once again written by James Tenyon IV with art by Gavin Fullerton. And overall, I kind of have mixed feelings on this finale. Uh, what the book does best is still there. It's a multifaceted character study with really realistic human conversations. That's still there. That's still really well done. Well done, but ultimately very depressing. You know, this is one of those guys where you see him struggle, and it's like, dude, you're messing up, you're making a bunch of mistakes, but I still really do feel for you. And yeah, following this guy around gets really sad, even when, you know, there are some things that are like, oh man, he really shouldn't have gotten in trouble for that. Like, most of this book, like about the first half, I'd say, is about conversation, and there's this character he's talking to and he gets this really interesting story and then it kind of the conversation no spoilers but it ends on this really weird note with the guy getting mad at him for something he couldn't have possibly known and yeah the the poor guy is just always walking into this uh this stuff but ultimately though the the thing that got me is how it ends if I didn't look up online beforehand that this was only going to be three issues, and if I didn't see that there was no next time, like at the end there's usually an ad for the next issue and that's not here, this really didn't feel like a, a finale, you know? Yeah, there is kind of a resolution and I think that's where he wanted to go with this story, but yeah, it wasn't the big finale that I was hoping for. And I don't know, I just really wish they had worked more on the monster side. I think a lot of this book is just James Tenyon needing to vent. And, you know, the uh, depressing character study is really well made. But the monster stuff is constantly shoved in the back. And here we don't have a great resolution. It kind of just feels like the book petering out, you know. And I wish there was something more final in the final issue. Yeah, we do eventually get to Portland, and, you know, I, I guess I see how the ending here does work, but, you know, and I, I said this before, I don't think doing this as a three-issue miniseries was the right call. The more time we put into something, the more we expect out of it, and if this had all come out as, like, a giant-sized comic or an original graphic novel, I would have read that and said, oh, this was an interesting short story. But stretching it out over the course of three months, having us come back and expecting something bigger, you know, like stretching it out over three months, I expected more than this ending. And I can tell that this is the ending that Tinian probably wanted. I understand what it means, but stretching this out, I really expected more out of it. And there's a few other things, too, like when we get the explanation of the creature, there is sort of the dad's explanation for it, what he thinks is happening and who knows if that's true or if the supernatural world the kid sees is we don't know but the dad will in this issue tell us what he thinks caused the creature and i won't spoil it obviously but it's kind of underwhelming i expected something more something dark and messed up and yeah i guess i can see how this would have caused the creature but I kind of wonder if it was censored. Like, for example, there's a photograph in the explanation, a uh, Polaroid. And when you see what's on the Polaroid, it's not as, like, you would expect it to be much more explicit. And it's really toned down. And I kind of wonder if there was an original version, an original ending of this story that would have been super dark. And... And when you read it, you'll probably know what I thought it was, where I thought it was going, and it didn't. And yeah, I kind of wonder if this is a watered down version of a really darker ending, you know? It, I I don't know, but yeah, it, the the explanation is underwhelming. The ending is kind of underwhelming. And yeah, if this was just 
one short story collected in one place that I could have read through for a relatively cheap price, I would have said, okay, that's fine, that was an interesting short story, but yeah, I don't know, I expected something more from even just a mini-series, I, I don't know, like I said, I'm kind of torn on this. Um, what the book does well, it does well. The character studies are still there, it's an interesting multifaceted character, it is super depressing to follow him around, but really well made and really realistic, but the monster side of this book, which is what I show up for when you see a cover like this, you know, I get lured in by the closet, by this cool promise of a horror story, and that side of the story was never fully developed. The character study side, yeah, that's great, it's really fully developed. The monster side, though, just barely got off the ground, it was just a tease at the end of each issue, and I wish that that side of the story was more, because that really is what lured me in. So, yeah, well made and what it's trying to do, I just wish it was bigger, you know? <laughs> anyway, uh, without further ado, if you guys want to see a little bit more about this book, I'm going to switch to the close-up camera. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I'll show you guys a little more on this release. I'll show you a little more of the story, a little more of the art. Uh, so without further ado, to the close-up camera. All right, here we are inside the castle taking a look at the third and final issue of The Closet. Let's bring it a little closer to the camera. We can see the uh, basic information in the top corner here, the image logo, issue three, and the closet logo. Hey, come to think of it though, it's only three issues. I really wish they had done a uh, blank of three to make that more clear, uh, but whatever. But then we do have this really nice striking cover, and I think the image on the cover is really cool and I do I, I like it now that being said it is a little misleading and when I first saw it I believe in the ad of the uh, issue 2 it had you know next time on the closet and then a picture of the cover I thought they had spoiled the ending because I mean we can gather a story out of this cover it really looks like you know it looks like the poster for the shining you know and I thought okay the dad is going to get possessed and attack the kid, and that's going to be the big action sequence that's going to tie in the father's conversations with the childhood monster. That's what it's all going to be about. Uh, but no, the uh, climax isn't nearly that intense, and, you know, to be honest, I kind of wish we got that story instead. Uh, but this one is mostly a conversation, and we'll analyze that in a second. And then, of course, we do get the star logo on the back, cover art by Gavin Fullerton, and there's the $3.99 price. This is, of course, cover A, which we can also tell from the uh, one there. Anyway, open up the book proper. Whoa, skipping ahead. There we are. The closet, and I do like the inside of the cover being a little uh, title page. Would have been good if we had a previously on here, but whatever. And then the logo, and I do like that these, I, I'm pretty sure they change each time. Uh, but anyway, now we'll hop into the story. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to analyze the plot. And to be honest, there's not terribly much to spoil in here. Uh, but I'll be avoiding the, uh, the conclusion of the comic, and I'll be skipping over large parts of what I do cover, because I don't want to ruin it for you. Uh, but anyway, we do get a motel. And I do like with the heavy black art, you know, you kind of see where it feels like it's kind of the shapes are floating in space almost. And we get this guy, uh, our main character here, smoking, uh, Tom with an H. And he's, you know, he'll later say that he's trying to quit and he'd basically quit, but he really just needed some time out. He needed a little break, you know. And someone approaches him and ask for a cigarette and they start to talk and he's got this big epic introduction where we see him smoking before we see his face and then we just see his face but to be honest with this whole page of like you know big introduction I expected him to be a serious like a big character but he really is just a guy you know but like you show this thing where you don't even sh like you do this thing where you don't show his face for a full page you do a big build-up, I was thinking, is this going to be like some creature from the closet in disguise as an old man? 
No, it's just a guy, though, so <laughs> whatever. Uh, but he's like, oh, you seem bummed out, and he says, oh, where do I even begin? And he's like, well, you start by just talking. And he talks about, you know, going across country, how he's fighting with his wife, and how no matter what he does, he can't quite do things right, and if he's not on the defensive constantly, he will inevitably mess up. So, yeah, a lot of what we had heard before, but it's good to have, you know, someone listening to him, uh, to invent, you know, and you even get this scene where it's like, you know, she's angry at the same people, and I listen to her vent all the time, but when I sound disinterested, she gets mad at me for not being interested in her talking about the same things over and over. So, again, a realistic conversation where no one's really in the right, because, yeah, why would he be interested? At the same time, it's insensitive not to, you know? So it is multifaceted, no one's 100% in the right, and I do think that's, uh, that's interesting. But he starts to talk out about how he's mad at the kid uh, because of the whole monster in the closet thing, and how his wife yelled at him for not getting the kid to therapy, and he said, I thought we were going to move anyway, why bother if the closet wasn't going to be there? And he's like, I thought we could get a fresh start, but it followed us, you know? And so, you know, you get a bit of that. And then you get the big thing where he says I'm, uh, that he knows how it all started. So we're going to get a little bit of an origin story. And of course, it will have something to do with the affair. And we do get a bit of a backstory about her and her being a babysitter. I won't go into the the whole thing, but we do get a story as to the lead up to the fair, a little bit more about what happened, and then the origin story, which is something I definitely won't spoil, uh, or at least the origin story from the father's perspective. Again, we're not 100% sure if these are real supernatural events or not, but we get this origin story about why the kid's scared, and it's one of those things where... I'm I'm wondering if there was a, a more explicit version that image censored or something because it really is kind of underwhelming and I you know I expected some big messed up reveal especially this is what we're building to this is issue three it's supposed to be you know disturbing and it's just kind of this weird little thing and okay that happened and now I don't know but yeah, the the origin, it, it makes sense, but it's ultimately underwhelming, and I I really wonder about it. But anyway, a little bit of this, uh, he does go back to the room, and he does, you know, he, he actually doesn't see, even though they're sharing a, a room with two beds, he doesn't even see the monster. So we do get a little check-in with the monster, and of course we will eventually, towards the end of the issue finally be arriving in Portland. There's the street sign. And I won't spoil what happens when they get to the new house, but that's sort of, you know, the, the very end of the book, and then it's over, and it just kind of trails off, you know? It's the final issue, and I mean, yeah, we do get that explanation scene, but like I said, it was underwhelming. And, you know, half of this issue... Because, like, there's the end of the conversation with the stranger, and you see that, that's the staple there. When they make comics, they fold the, they stack all the paper up, and they fold it, and then you put in the staple. So this is the halfway point of the comic, actually a little farther on, because there's a few ads in the back. But about half of the final issue is a conversation with a stranger... And then we barely get any of the the monster, and we barely get any resolution or or big finale. Now, like I said, if they didn't stress this out, stretch this out over the course of three weeks, if this all came out at once, I could read it and say, "Oh, that's an interesting little short story." But when you stretch it out, you're implying that it's supposed to be bigger, and you you know give us a cool cover like that. It implies that there's going to be something more of value, something more climatic happening, and it really doesn't, and it's not what the book wants to do, but yeah, still, I don't know, it's just, it, it felt like the book petering out, even though I could tell that this is what they wanted to do, it's just, yeah, you come in for 
The Closet, and I feel ultimately that The Closet's kind of a misleading title because the book aggressively doesn't want to talk about monsters. I don't know. It, like I said, for what it is and for what it's trying to do, it establishes that goal super well, but the ending being a little bit just kind of, you know, and then it's done, it, I don't know. I, and I'm going to have to think about this one. And, you know, tell me what you guys think. Maybe there's something I'm not seeing here. Maybe, oh, if you look at it this way, it's actually like this. You know, if you guys have a different take, I'd definitely be willing to hear it. But that being said, I didn't like them putting the supernatural elements down. And I wanted more of a finale for my finale. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there is going to be more of this. Maybe the internet's wrong. There's no ad in the back for a fourth issue. But as a finale, it's, it's fine. I don't know. I think I'm going to reread this all at once and then maybe do a, maybe do a video. Uh, just talking, whoa, sorry, that was the uh, bag and board there. Uh, maybe do a video talking about the, uh, the series as a whole. I don't know. Uh, anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. Uh, this should be my Image Comics playlist where you can see me talk about uh, the first two issues in this series. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Image Comics playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.